Good afternoon. My name is Bonnie, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the CA Clarity Community webcast. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, we will have a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number one on your telephone keypad. To withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. I would now like to turn the call over to Ms. Karen Bodwin. Please go ahead. Well, thank you, Bonnie. Good afternoon or good morning, everyone. This is Karen Bodwin. It's a pleasure to be back with you all again. It is um, time for our fall webcast, and we are very fortunate to have um, a stellar list of um, presenters today. Um, before we get into that, though, I wanted to remind everyone that CA World uh, 2014 is November 9th through the 12th, and there is still opportunity for the community members to get their $200 discount um, when registering. So please um, consider attending and consider um, the, uh, the great um, networking opportunities and knowledge sharing and uh, paying forward opportunities that you'll have at CA World. Um, also want to remind folks that we have a new community portal. And um, I want to extend kudos to the CA team that um, developed, presented, and uh, installed that portal because it's a, um, it's a great uh, change to what we had previously, and um, it's a much more uh, intuitive and interactive process. So please make sure you go out to the website and uh, visit the CA Clarity Community Portal. And finally, there are going to be a few updates about um, new opportunities within the portal for our users, but I am going to let Brian Nathanson um, discuss that. He's a project manager from um, Clarity, and he'll be discussing the uh, Clarity community update. Michael Tebow will follow um, Brian. Michael is a manager of the Clarity Support and Training at TD Bank, and Michael is also um, the vice president of the CA uh, user community. But we're going to kick off with Dave Werner. Dave is the um, product manager, and he's going to offer us a sneak peek for Clarity PPM customers. So, Dave, thank you very much for joining us, and um, I'm going to hand off to you. All right. Thank you, Karen. And uh, I'll make sure I can actually – I'm not uh, – there we go. Okay, I want to make sure I went to the right slides. Um, so thank you again. And so my name is Dave Warner. I'm with the product marketing team uh, at CA for, for PPM. And I just wanted to start off just a, a few minutes on, on this webcast about CA World uh, before we go into what Brian and Mike are going to talk about. And the first thing I should say is, uh, you know, you've actually heard me talk to the community before about that the, these community webcasts are not a forum for advertisements, and and I, I personally am a champion for that. So I'm very aware of that, and I want to be very careful to not uh, make this too much of an advertisement for attending uh, CA World. Uh, but in talking with Karen and Mike and, and the board about this, we, we know that there's been a lot of uh, questions, a lot of interest from all of you to a lot of you attend CA World. And we've made some really significant changes to the format of CA World this year. So with that, we thought it would be good to spend a little time on this at the beginning of this call just to let you know what those changes are. They're actually, uh, we think, uh, pretty significant uh, and, and really valuable changes we're making to make it a, a better experience for you all. So I'm going to try to walk the line here to give you some good information without uh, trying to be too advertisement and, and uh, trying to pitch this too much to you. So um, see the next. Uh, I'm trying to page down. There we go. Uh, so first, let me give you the where and when on this, the details. So it's at Mandalay Bay Resort. Uh, that's in Las Vegas. It's the same resort we had the last CA World at that was roughly a year and a half ago. Um, the dates are November 9th through 12th. So November 9th is a Sunday, and there is some activities. Uh, there, there are some activities for that Sunday. I'll go through that here in a minute. Uh, but the conference really kicks off Monday morning, and then we go to about noon on, on Wednesday on the 12th. Um, the changes that we've made to the format are really from feedback that we've heard from CA customers, uh, from those of you that have attended a number of CA, World, uh, so CA Worlds over the years. Um, we've, we've listened to that feedback, and we've tried to make some changes to do a number of things for you. Uh, for one thing, we wanted to make it more thought leadership oriented, give you more information uh, on topics other than just the product information. And we know you are there for product information, and you want as much of that as really you can consume, 
but you also want that kind of thought leadership information. Uh, you want to be able to have better access to other tracks. And in the past, that's not been particularly easy or accessible to be able to uh, shift from one to the other or even know really what is going on in those other tracks. Um, but the, the biggest improvement we wanted to make is around networking. And, you know, as Karen just mentioned, that is probably one of the most valuable things you get out of going to CA World is the ability to network with other CA customers, with other Clarity customers, customers that use Clarity. In, in your case, all of you on this call, right, you use Clarity every day. And to be able to talk with Clarity uh, customers who are in the same industry, using it the same way, getting ideas, you know, that is one of the, the greatest values of CA World. And we wanted to be able to improve that and, and really add to that experience. So the best way to really describe what these changes are is to show you uh, what CA World will look like now. So this is a, a drawing of what CA World will look like from the top, <laughs> looking down at it. And where, so your first thought may be, well, okay, well that looks like uh, an exhibition center floor. And you know, if you've, obviously you've been to, if you've been to CA World before, or really any other software user conference, or even any other conference for that matter, Gartner, what have you. Um, usually there's an exhibition center where you have booths for different, uh, different products or vendors or partners, and, and maybe there would be a small presentation or so you'd have on that uh, exhibition floor. But then when you go to your sessions for your particular track, uh, you know, you grab your piece of paper with your agenda and you walk down the different hallways you go to and you find what, uh, you know, what little room you're going to be in and, and go hear that session. Um, what we found is that, you know, that ended up having an effect where it wasn't particularly easy to network uh, when you're, as you're going down one hallway and other people are going down another. Um, it wasn't particularly easy to understand what was going on in other areas and be able to attend other sessions you might be interested in. Uh, the other uh, thing that it, that it did for us that we're trying to fix is that our sessions would compete with each other. And in the case of PPM, you know, when you look at your agenda in the past, we would have two or three sessions at any given time and you would have to pick which one you wanted to attend. And, and sometimes you wanted to attend more than one, and, and that could be frustrating. Uh, but the other thing that would happen is that some of the sessions, the, some of our PPM sessions would compete with each other, and one would draw attendees, maybe you know, uh, an unfair share of the attendees, and it would leave other sessions that really might have had great, valuable content with, without many attendees in them, and it would kind of tend to take some of the momentum away from the conference, really, uh, in, in, those, in those cases. So, Trying to, uh, trying to do something different and really remedy a lot of that. What we're doing at CA World, and this is across the board, across all products, is that everything will be on the same floor. So what you're seeing here is, is a view of the floor, and this is not just the exhibition center. This is where everything will take place. So all of the sessions that you attend, all of the meetings you have with experts, all of the demonstrations that you get, all of the talking with uh, partners, and most importantly, all the networking that you do with other customers is all going to take place on the same floor, the same place. Um, now, so these are different areas of this. Uh, you'll see this is going to be a very large space. It's, uh, to give you some idea of the scope of this, each one of those different areas has its own what we call a cineplex, its own theater area. And you can kind of see from the drawing there that within each one of those wedge areas, is, a, is a, its own theater, and each one of those theaters will seat two to 300 people. So that alone gives you an idea of the size and scope of what this will look like. So really, these are pretty exciting changes, and we think this will do a lot for you. So in the case of Clarity, where you would be looking to go to, we will be in both the IntelliCenter area and the Management Cloud area, those two wedges you see there uh, next to each other. IntelliCenter is a relatively new grouping of products at CA that, um, that CA Clarity PPM falls under. Um, Management Cloud is a, another offering of uh, products we have at CA around SaaS products used for management and uh, our on-demand version of Clarity and also uh, Playbook fall under that as it is uh, a cloud-based product. So we, you, you will be spending, if you're attending CA World, you'll be spending your time in those two sections for the most uh, of your time. That's where all the PPM sessions will be. That's where the booths and demonstrations and vendors, everyone will be around, uh, around those areas. That's where you'll do your networking. But as you can tell, this also gives you the opportunity to go and into some other areas that you may have interest in. So if, if you're interested in some of the thought leadership topics on DevOps or security, it's much easier for you to be able to 
just wander over there and take a look and see, oh, what's their calendar look like? Oh, what's going on right now? And just drop in and, and uh, be able to hear some of those very interesting and exciting speakers that will be going on. So again, this is a, you know, it's a, it's a big change. It's an exciting one. And we're, we're really, for those of us that have been to a lot of CA Worlds, we are excited to go and see what this, uh, see what this will be like. And, and we really do think this will be a very valuable change. So here's a quick look at some of what you'll see in Management Cloud and IntelliCenter. It gives you an idea of uh, the sessions that will be on the Cineplex. In some cases, we're, we're, when, when there is a, another product that might be on, say, the IntelliCenter stage uh, at the same time, then we will have a PPM session, what's called an off-the-floor session, and it will be a, actually another um, theater, which is just off. It wasn't included in that drawing, but it's, it's just off to the side. So what that will mean is we will have a PPM session at any given time of the day. There will be uh, PPM content for you to, to take part in. And this is a look at what some of the, the – these are actually some of the customer-driven sessions that will take place at CA World. So this gives you a look at some of the topics we have, some of the customers who are presenting them. Uh, we, of course, will have other presentations that will be there from CA people, so our presentations on things like the roadmap or presentations on things like the upcoming integration with version 1, things like that. There will be presentations as well. But these are some of the customer-driven presentations. And, you know, one, one thing I note here is that, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we wanted to get away from these sessions competing with each other. So there will be one PPM session going on at a time. And, you know, by definition, that means that there are a fewer number of sessions of, uh, that we will have. But we really think the net benefit, it, 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 the net of it is it will be a benefit for you in that we are focusing those sessions on ones that we know will have the most interest to you, that will have very strong speakers, strong companies that you're going to be very interested in hearing their, their stories on. Uh, and again, it, it, it gets away from uh, the concept of that some sessions are over and, uh, and, and not attended as well. And you know, we want to just keep, keep good momentum and good networking available you know, throughout the day, every day. So the other thing that I know uh, many of you are, are interested in and why you go to CA World is for the education and really the kind of hands-on expertise uh, and training that you can get there. So there, there's no difference there this year in what we're doing at CA World. So some of that will be on Sunday, uh, in the, uh, on Sunday afternoon. So as you can see there, we're doing uh, pre-conference education on what we're doing with Microsoft Project Integration. There's improvements, uh, significant improvements to our MSB integration in 14.1, 14.2. Uh, we're doing a session on resource management. We're doing a session on portfolio management. Um, and then also throughout Monday through Wednesday, we will do the hands-on labs and, and really, you know, sharing expertise, getting you that kind of hands-on training. And we'll be doing sessions on data warehouse and also a session on uh, what's coming up with the new reporting tool, Jaspersoft, that many of you are interested in. And there will be plenty of opportunity to be able to get uh, just your hands on that and be able to, to get good training on it. Also on Sunday, if you're a member of the Product Advisory Council, uh, we will be meeting on Sunday. Uh, I know if you're a member of the Product Advisory Council, you haven't heard from me about that yet. That's something we just got uh, approval to do. So uh, you'll be hearing from me about that shortly. But uh, if you're a member of that council, you're going to hear from me, and, and hopefully you can join us uh, that Sunday for a meeting as well. So uh, real quickly, a couple of other things. You know, I, I mentioned that there's a focus this year on not just product content, but also uh, thought leadership content and other types of speakers. So this is a look at some of those speakers that will be talking in some of those different wedges at different times. Really interesting speakers and content. So, you know, people like one of the co-founders of Twitter or the executive editor of Wired. So, you know, really good content, really interesting speakers that you would be able to, again, have very easy access to be able to know when they're speaking uh, and be able to join in. It really should be a very valuable conference all the way around. Um, one, we always have a, a guest keynote speaker. Uh, last year it was uh, Sir Richard Branson. This year it is Magic Johnson. And if you've paid any attention to his career at all since basketball, you know that he's, it's been a very interesting one, uh, very successful businessman. He's now currently the, one of the owners of the L.A. Dodgers. So uh, that should be a really fantastic speech. And then, uh, and then, as always, we always have a big party uh, for CA customers only and uh, with a concert, and this year it's the fray. So that should be great fun uh, as usual. So 
That's really about it. But, you know, I did say this wouldn't be too advertising uh, like <laughs> holding to my own rules on that. Uh, but really, we do really hope that you'll join us. We, we think this will be a very valuable uh, uh, time for you all uh, spend. We think it will be great networking. We really do think the changes that we've made will make this more valuable than ever. So we hope that you'll join us. Uh, to register, just go to CA World, or, sorry, just go to CA.com and it gives you all the information you need to be able to register and, and set up your agenda. So uh, I think, uh, Karen, I'm done, but I will hand the ball over to Brian Nathanson so that uh, he can uh, talk next about ideas. Thanks very much, Dave. Appreciate it. Okay, and thank you, Dave, and I will go ahead and share my desktop and go into uh, talking about ideas. So I recently, so my name is Brian Nathanson, and I am a product manager for Clarity, and I recently joined the product management team after spending 10 years in pre-sales. So I've worked with a number of customers, including some I'm sure who are on the phone, in various points in time and I came over to add my expertise and my, and my experiences to the product management team. And one of the uh, areas that I've always been a great proponent for is the idea site and making sure that enhancement requests are properly cataloged and tracked uh, so, that, so that you as customers understand what we're doing internally and have some visibility into our process. And as one of my responsibilities in product management is to now own that queue. And so I wanted to present to the community what the proposed thought process is for how we will be processing enhancement requests that come in through the IDEA site. And as Karen alluded to, there have been some changes. With the new uh, community rollout that she mentioned, um, one of the key changes along with that is that enhancement requests, what were formerly known as ERQs for longtime Clarity customers, will actually now all be rolling into the IDEAS site in the community. So there will no longer be a separate system for ERQs. They are gradually transitioning that over to the IDEAS site over the next couple of months here, and we will be moving on to the IDEAS site exclusively for enhancement requests. So it becomes even more important that we have a way of processing those ideas. And so this is a draft process, and why I wanted to present it on the community call is to make sure that I get some feedback on this process. Uh, I know that we are at holding the Q&A session at the end. However, if you wish to type questions in to the Q&A interface, uh, feel free to do that, and then I will address them immediately after, before I hand it over to Mike or at the end, depending on how many there are. So the first thing is that I understand that the current ideas queue requires names, as in we've got a lot of ideas out there, some of which have been responded to from product management, some of which have not. Some of the product management responses have been inconsistent, meaning that we've responded to some but not others. I understand all of that. So I am currently personally reviewing all of the idea requests, over 1,300 of them currently that are out there, and I will be updating the status of all of them over the next few months, including what we are currently doing. Uh, the process that I'm going to outline here for everyone will begin at the beginning of the year, meaning 2015, January 2015. This gives us some time to clean everything up, make sure that we know what's going on out there, and then be able to start processing these in a more standard fashion so that you know you can get feedback from us uh, on a timely basis. Uh, but feel free to continue submitting new ideas in this time frame. I'll be picking them up. I, I, do, I do a poll from the site regularly so that I can keep up with what's still being added out there, including whatever uh, updates people might have made to their votes and so forth. So, okay. But here is a chart that diagrams what we are thinking. And when I say we, for those who are longtime Clarity customers and may have worked with Kurt Steinle or Denise Brown or Bill Yee, all of us are on the same team. So I'm working with all of those folks, and we've had conversations about what the best way to address processing ideas is. And so this chart represents some of our thinking around this idea, around this process. And the first thing I'll say is that you know, the challenge for us in product management, as I'm sure that a lot of you in your organizations 
uh, run into this problem. In fact, in a lot of cases, this is part of the reason why you, you have clarity in the first place, is that I've rarely run into a customer idea that I didn't like or didn't think was a good idea, right? I've, I've almost everything I hear from customers I agree with, and I say, yes, that would be a good thing to put into the product. The challenge becomes the prioritization of all of that. And, okay, we only have a limited amount of time and resources, which ideas are going to get in and which ones are going to be uh, put into a later time frame. And so what we are doing here is trying to get a handle on how we can rationalize all of the ideas that are out there and make sure that we give them the proper attention that all of them deserve. And so what you see here is that when you – we'll kind of walk through this fairly quickly, but and I have some more detail on exactly when this will all happen. But at, at a high level, you'll enter your idea, and it will go into a new status. There will then be a classification. I will perform a classification on it when it comes in. And what that really means is that I'm going to group it into a particular area. Some ideas are, respect, are relevant to product, project management. Some are for resource management. Some address the platform as a whole. Many ideas are about administration. Uh, so there are a variety of different categories that we are creating in terms of buckets. And I will place it into an appropriate bucket because from a, from a product management perspective and for any of the product managers out there, the NPD customers out there, they'll know this. It's much easier for us to consider a basket of ideas together as a theme as opposed to individual ideas on their own one at a time. So we'll, we will perform that classification. And that will lead to an initial disposition, meaning that we will put it into one of two statuses, either under review or wish listed. And the premise there is that depending on whether or not we want additional feedback, and I'll go into that in a second, from there, the ones that are in under review, we will do a full product management review. And what that means is that we have calls, we engage the engineers, and we discuss the specifics of a particular request and what it would take and whether or not it is something that we want to put into our backlog or whether or not it is something that is while it's a good idea, it's probably not something that we're going to be able to do in any time soon enough that we would say we put it into the backlog. So in that case, it would go into not planned, or we may say that, okay, it's, it's a good idea, but again, we still want additional feedback. We still want people to vote it up, so to speak. So we will do that as wish listed. And then finally, of course, once items are in the currently planned, they will make it into the backlog, and then at some point in a future release, they will be delivered. Again, we can't say exactly necessarily which release, but that's the basic, the basic proposed flow. So I said I would get into a little bit more detail on each of these. So the new ideas that are coming in, I, my intention right now is, to, again, starting at the beginning of the year, is to process them once a month around the middle of the month. That's actually uh, avoiding our year-end activity, or sorry, month-end activity, so that, that's probably a good time for it. And as I mentioned, we'll place an under review or wish list. So those that are actually fit into a current area of focus or meet other varying criteria uh, will be placed under review. So it may match up with a strategic initiative that CA has. It may, it may be something that we've heard from another, a number of customers through other channels. Uh, it may be that we have current work that's already in that area. All of those things are taken into consideration about deciding whether something would be under review. If it's an idea that we have some questions about or if it is an idea that we say, okay, it could be a good idea, but we want to see if people, if how many people want it, we might leave it out there and put it into wish listed status, which allows people to continue to vote on it and see if the votes can continue to accumulate for that particular idea. By the way, it, there's really no set hard and fast rules about which status it goes into in the sense that there are some ideas that will go in, into under review that may only have one vote, uh, but again, they match a particular area of focus. Uh, there are others that might have a much more significant number of votes, but that might be wish listed because the nature of the change is so significant that we really need to have a large consensus of customers that drive that particular change. So like I said, the criteria can vary, uh, but basically that will give you an indication of whether we are going to consider it or whether we'd like some additional feedback. We'll contact the submitter if we have any questions. Some of the ideas that are out there, for example, I know have some questions that I have that I'm, that I'm collecting that I will be contacting the people who submitted them. 
some of them are old enough that we'll be asking simple questions just as is this still relevant for you? Has this has is this still something that is is a request, an active request? Uh, and in some cases what we might do is we might take an idea and decompose it into smaller ideas. Uh, because we have some ideas that are just too large that they would never actually be planned in their current suggestion state. However, if you broke it down into smaller increments, we might be able to do something with those. So if that is the case, I will contact the submitter and suggest an appropriate breakdown, and it would be treated the way that you see here. So then from there, at least once a quarter, we will have a meeting, or actually what we will do here is that before we go into our, our product management backlog planning, what we will do, backlog grooming, what we will do is we will select probably about 25 to 30 candidates. Um, and this is to help probably in the area of focus I mentioned. So, for example, just as an example, and this has actually not been planned yet, but if resource management were one of the focus areas for the next release, for the ELTS release, uh, we might say, okay, these are all the, the candidates that we think in resource management that are good ideas. And what we will do is we will do what it says here. We'll place those candidates into other, under review, and we will put everything else temporarily into a wish-listed status. And the idea is that we want – and then we will broadcast to the community that we are having a voting drive. And that what we'd like you to do is focus on those specific ideas, the 25 or 30 that we've selected, and pay specific attention to them and tell us whether or not you think they have value. Because what we're really trying to get a feel for is what particular points of an area of focus would make the most sense for customers. Once we've finished the voting period, we will place everything back into the status it had prior to that, except for those that are, quote, winners, so to speak. Um, the ones that are the, get the most votes and or make the most sense based on that information will be placed into currently planned, and they will be available, and then we will add them to our backlog. However, as always with product management, that's no guarantee that it will make it into any particular release, um, but it does mean that we are, are seriously considering it in terms of the feedback that we've received. Um, quote, losing candidates, which are not really losing, it's just that they didn't, necessarily meet the criteria we were hoping to see, uh, will be placed again back into their original status. Uh, and then what the last rule that we are going to start applying, although it won't apply to anything that's currently out there, I'm still, I'm still considering all of those during the cleanup, but once the turn of the year hits, what we will do is anything that has been in a wish-listed status for longer than two years will be moved to not planned, and we will request that the submitter resubmit it if it, had, if it is still a uh, valid request because we want to make sure to keep the backlog or keep the ideas to a current. Okay. And in some cases, that's because a new release has come out or because uh, tools have changed for the customer and so forth, so we want to make sure that that is the case. Okay. And that's pretty much it for the process. So. That gives you some insight into what we're thinking in terms of when you submit ideas, what we will do behind the scenes in terms of making sure that we consider all of the ideas and consider exactly what's going to happen with them when they're submitted. And then also it gives you an idea of what's going to uh, be the case for ideas that are out there and under review or wish listed and how you can influence them by continuing to vote and or breaking them down into chunks that would make them easier for us to process. And with that, I will return back to the WebEx. And uh, I, there is one question that was asked, and the question was, does the idea process include any steps to combine similar ideas? Uh, and the answer to that question is yes, uh, it is it is basically right at the moment it is for me to actually combine them. Um, in fact, in going through the queue, I think I have reviewed almost 400 ideas so far, and I have noticed several different duplications in there. Um, so as right now that is a manual process, but I do know that the old ideas site had a functionality that when you started typing in the subject of your idea that it would 
it would give you an, a clue as to whether some other similar ideas might be out there. I don't know if that is an available feature of the of the um, the architecture of the site, the Jive site. But I am tracking duplicates. But if we can find a way to make it easier for for customers when entering requests to um, track against similar ideas, we will do our best to try to add that. Okay. And with that, that is all I had. So unless there are any other questions, I will turn it over to Michael. Thank you very much, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Well, good afternoon. I'm Mike Tebow, and I'm just trying to get my presentation up running. So a while back when we first talked about having the interactive Gantt coming into Clarity, we talked about me maybe doing a presentation, and I guess it's probably a couple of years in the works, works now, I assume, Karen. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with them, we've, you know, my, my company here has been using Clarity for a number of years, and uh, they're starting to realize, what's this Gantt? And I'm finding a lot of people really don't understand that this interactive Gantt exists now. Uh, some people have been around Clarity, you know, 752, 753, 8, and 12. Remember the uh, work breakdown structure that used to show up that was uh, pretty limited. So I thought we'd be nice to do a presentation on the interactive Gantt that's now available within Clarity with the scheduler. The slides are actually taken from two different environments. Part of them are taken from our version 13.3 environment. And on the slide, you can see our uh, test environment for the global user community. So if anyone's interested in getting into those, uh, please go to the home page and take a look at the login. You can uh, get information as to how to log in or contact one of your members of the board and we can help get you in. So as a shameless plug for CA World, did anyone recognize the hand with the uh, light bulb? That was the uh, big one people were doing for pictures last uh, CA World. So I'm trying to get this to go to the next slide. And I'm having a minor technical issue that's not moving into the next page. Okay. So a bit of a background behind this. Now Clarity version 13 introduced the interactive Gantt, which replaced the previous work breakdown structure page. And I have a bit of a, a screenshot of what the old interactive Gantt looked like. And if anyone rec remembers this, it was pretty straightforward. You could see your tasks. You see the task ID, the start, finish date, and a few other uh, parameters, as well as the uh, Gantt chart. But it was pretty static. You couldn't modify or update any of the information on it. You could increase the size of it. And, you know, with the Snagit or a print screen, you could actually print it. It was pretty, pretty rudimentary and, and pretty, uh, pretty simplistic. Uh, screen we have at the bottom is a snapshot of the uh, version of 13.2, the major difference between 13.2 and 13.3 is the addition of the ability to print. But here you have a much nicer view. You have a number of icons allow you to control it. And we'll go through what the icons do in a minute. But you actually have your work breakdown structure on the left-hand side, and you have your uh, Gantt on the right-hand side. It's interactive. So the old work breakdown structure was very limited. You couldn't print it easily. Again, you had to use Snagit. You had to uh, do a screenshot. Uh, you couldn't add modified tasks, dates, dependencies, or resource assignments. And if anyone remembers what it's like trying to enter a work breakdown structure or enter tasks in Clarity back then, along with uh, you know creating a task and creating dependencies and all the multiple clicks you had to do, most people got turned off pretty quick and went to Open Workbench or Microsoft Project quite quickly. Quite quickly. You know, you can see all the top-level tasks, including sub-projects, and you can see the task dependencies. But it wasn't that easy to drill into or get any of the further information from it. And then comes version 13. You know, not only with the new user interface with Clarity, you have the uh, easily edit, and you can edit, you can add, edit, and delete tasks from within the interactive Gantt. You can edit resource assignments directly from it as well, modify start and end dates. One, you can baseline, you can auto-schedule, you can create tentative schedules, drag and drop dependencies, and a lot more. And a couple of nice new features that were added was the ability to, if you change your dates, it would redline and keep your original date. And also, any field you change, you get this nice little red triangle in the upper left-hand corner, reminding you that you've done a change. 
you know, I think just what every one of us in the past is in older versions of Clarity have made changes and run into the issue of uh, did I change that or not? Or saving it and realize, oh, I didn't want that changed. At least now with the new interactive Gantt, we have that ability to see what we've changed and what the previous value was. There's a lot of nice new features with it. And on the right-hand side, again, you have your interactive Gantt that you can, be, that you can manipulate, drag and drop. So some basic information. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you have your work breakdown structure. And so the Gantt allows you to create, manage, and view all the project tasks in the Gantt view. And it's divided into two components. Your work breakdown structure on the left-hand side, and you have your Gantt view on the right-hand side. And number of the icons and what you can do with those, and we'll discuss those in a minute. And you control your, 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 your time scale through these icons on the right side. Not to mention you have your standard ability to filter as well. So some of the nice new features that are added to it, you can change task states from within that view. You can create finish and start dependencies, start and finish dependencies, pretty much dependencies overall. You have drag and drop operations, so you can grab a task and move it around. You, it'll actually display master and sub projects. You can also expand all the projects and, or uh, collapse them as well with a couple of the buttons on the screen. And by default, late tasks and milestones are displayed with exclamation points on the task or milestone bar. And they also show up as red, so it's very visually intuitive as to what's had going on. Completed tasks are displayed with check marks on the task milestone bar. And you also get a green progress bar above the task to indicate how much of the work is complete for that task. So at a glance, there's a lot of information that it shows. And if you change the work breakdown structure of the Gantt, the changes are stored as pending edits and must be saved or discarded. So effectively, you can create a tentative schedule, manipulate it, see if you like it. And if you do, then you can publish it, and that will become your scheduled record. Or you can just turf it, and it goes back to your uh, schedule that you had prior to your start. You can also update resource assignments from it, and when you click on the, the, uh, one of the cells on the resources, it'll bring up the resources that are currently within your team, and you can have, add them to that task. And with version 13.3 of Clarity, you can print the Gantt. So to navigate to the Gantt, you get there from your project properties page, and in the open in scheduler drop-down, select Clarity Gantt, and that will display the interactive Gantt. Uh, one thing that I'm realizing is the, I must apologize, some of these slides may, are going to look a bit uh, odd because the, uh, uh, the animations I've added in PowerPoint uh, don't seem to be reflected here. So if anyone's interested in the actual uh, PowerPoint deck itself, I'll make sure that's posted in the, uh, in the document section for the global communities. There are some animations in that actually walk you through how pieces work. So in this case, we'd be going to the uh, into the project and open the schedule, which is in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, and you just select the Clarity Gantt from there, and that will bring up the interactive Gantt. So go through the various icons that are on the screen. One thing you'll notice is some of the icons may not be available, and that is due to the fact that some, if you have pending changes or pending edits that need to be saved, it won't let you do certain functionalities until it's actually saved. So the number of icons that that are available. For anyone that remembers, this, uh, this three and a half inch floppy disk here uh, saves your changes. And your changes are only saved when you explicitly save it. So you, you can spend hours updating your schedule and updating your resources, adding tasks, setting up dependencies, but nothing is going to be permanent until you make that change, until you make the save. So it's highly recommended that you, as most people say, you like what, you, like, like what you've uh, modified save it. Uh, if you go away and the system times out on you, you're going to lose your changes. Also, you have the ability with the three and a half inch disk with the back arrow, that will discard your currently saved changes. So, sorry, currently unsaved changes. Uh, so if you're doing some installation, you don't like what you see, you hit that and it just takes it back to the last state it was before it saved, to the last saved state. You can also, with the check mark and the plus sign, insert new task in the work breakdown structure. It just appears at the bottom, and then you can drag and drop and move it around the screen to wherever you'd like to. You can also, with the check mark with the arrow, you can copy a task from a project template. So you can still bring in the task from templates. Uh, and like most people that have discovered by now, you can also change the filter criteria. So you can turn off the template, you know, the template attribute and copy tasks from existing projects into your Gantt as well the work breakdown structure. You also have the ability to add an existing sub-project to the work breakdown structure, and it shows up 
via this icon here with the uh, tab with the plus sign, the other file, and it will display within the Gantt as well. You can also create a sub-project and add it to the work breakdown structure. And you can create a sub-project from a project template and add to work breakdown structures. As you can see, there's a lot of ways of adding tasks and adding existing projects or templates to your work breakdown structure. It is the ability here to assign a resource to a selected task. And when we go back to look at the Gantt in a moment, you'll see the little checkbox on the left-hand side. So you can select that and hit this icon. You can add a resource to a selected task. But the other easy way of doing it is just from within the Gantt chart itself, within the breakdown structure side, is under the resource column, just select the resource box, and you'll have a browse button. You click that and add the resource that way. And if we have time, I can take you into the live system and show you. You can outdent selected tasks and indent selected tasks, and that automatically, when you uh, indent a selected task, makes the task above it the summary task. And if anyone remembers what's happened with Clarity uh, 13, is at the, ho the top level of your Gantt, of uh, your work breakdown structure, the summary tasks are classified as phases, and they show up in a lot of the various reports in the uh, CSP pack. So more of the icons. As you see, there's a lot of them. We have the indent selected task, and as I mentioned, that makes the task above it a summary task. You can move a selected task. So again, with the checkbox next to the task name selected, you can move the task up. Likewise, you can actually click on the task and just drag it around and move it as, as well instead of using this arrow. One of the nice features I really appreciate with this new uh, interactive Gantt is the ability to create task dependencies between the selected tasks. So you can go to either side of the task of the Gantt and just do a little mouse, just hold the mouse over it and you see a little icon that looks like a chain up here. And you can just drag and drop the chain from that task to any other task, the front or back, and it creates that dependency. Naturally, if you want to define a lag for that dependency, you'd have to go into Clarity, into the actual task itself, to the, to the uh, dependency submenu and modify the lag. If you want to remove task dependencies between the selected tasks, you have the chain break icon here as well. One of the nice features you have is you can expand all the tasks in WBS. So generally when you open the work breakdown structure, all the tasks are come collapsed, which is a bit of a time saver. Uh, if you want to expand them all, you can just click it and they all expand at once. And the following icon, the minus sign, it will collapse all the tasks in the work breakdown structure. So if we remember, uh, Projects can be locked when you're work playing, when you're playing, when you're using the uh, work breakdown structure, or like in a Microsoft project when you have, or open workbench when you have the project checked out and you're, you're doing manipulations and the project is locked. Likewise, when you're working with the work breakdown structure or the Gantt, the project is locked when it's pending as. And just from the icon, you can just take a look on the screen. You know if the project's locked or not. And if you have the unlock, you know the project's not locked. The standard processes apply, you know, who can unlock it, lock it, and I have a slide for that a little bit later on. You also have the ability to auto-schedule with options. So when you define your work breakdown structure, you have the resources associated with it, and you define your task dependencies and all the other information, you actually have the ability to use the auto-scheduler. I'm not going to go into too many details with the auto-scheduler today. If anyone's interested, I do actually have a, a deck that takes about two hours to go through that actually goes into how to really use the, use the auto-scheduler with the Gantt chart. And if you're interested, let me know and I can send it to you. You can auto-schedule and, and publish the new schedule. So when you auto-schedule, effectively it creates a tentative schedule. And it doesn't become real, the real schedule record, until you actually publish it. So you can manipulate it. You can add resources, move dates, tasks around, add dependencies. Auto-schedule it. See if you like it. And if you don't, you can, you can delete the tentative schedule, do more manipulations. And when you, when you like it, you can actually publish it, and that becomes the new schedule, and that's what will be in Clarity. You can also create a new tentative schedule as well. So instead of running the auto schedule, if you want to create a new tentative schedule, you just click the, uh, yeah, the tentative schedule button. And if you happen to like your tentative schedule that you created, you can actually publish it. So you can not only can auto schedule and publish it, but you can also do your manipulations through the work breakdown structure and interactive can, and you can publish it from there as well after you saved it. You can also delete the tentative schedule, which makes sense. And one of the nice features also for me is you can also create a project baseline. So normally when you want a baseline within Clarity, you've got to go into the drop-down uh, off the project properties tab to create a baseline. 
you can actually create a baseline directly from within the interactive GAMP by clicking this icon. It still brings up the same information for entering the baseline name, baseline, and ID, but it, you can do it from here with just a click of a button. You also have the ability of selecting individual tasks or tasks and updating your existing baseline with those changes from those tasks. You can also update your costs and totals, and these come under the project baseline. You'll see a number of these icons here will actually be represented by one icon on the screen with a drop down like baseline will have a little arrow pointing down. You click on that and the other options will come up as well. You have the ability to delete tasks or remove a sub-project from the master project, again, by selecting the, uh, the task or project by the little checkbox and hitting the X. And also, if you're interested, uh, if you can't remember what the, the bars look like on the screen for the Gantt chart, there is actually a, a legend that will be displayed if you have the exclamation mark. And the new icon for version 13.3 is a little piece of paper with the eyeball on it, and that creates a printable view. I was doing some testing with it last night on a machine that didn't have a printer hooked up, but it had Snagit and had Adobe PowerPoint and actually smart enough to come up and let me know if I wanted to create a Snagit option with it or uh, uh, the, uh, not PowerPoint, uh, Adobe uh, Acrobat. So it actually uh, knew what was on my, my system. And on the right-hand side of the screen, you can actually control the time scale value for the Gantt chart. So you have a few icons. You have, this is what the screen looks like on the right-hand side. You have one that looks like a little calendar, and that allows you to define the time scale. And that can be days, weeks, months, quarters, or years. And you also, in the other icon, you can actually collapse the Gantt. You just display only the word breakdown structure. And that icon will change to arrows pointing the other way to actually bring the Gantt back into view. So on the time, time scale for the Gantt chart, you also have four other icons. And the one with the double arrows will move you back or forward 12 periods. So if you have it set to days, 12 days, 12 weeks, 12 months, 12 quarters, or 12 years, you can also go back individual periods, so one day, one week, one month, and the same thing for moving forward. And this makes it very easy to scroll through. I don't know why I'm getting that little Mike Tebow showing up on the screen. And here's an example of the Gantt legend. So as you can see, you have your standard tasks, which is up in blue. You have a progress through bar. So we mentioned earlier on, you have that little green bar that appears above your uh, task that you're working on. And that shows you the, the progress that you have through, or in other words, the percent complete. A completed task actually has the little check marks within the task. A late task shows up red with exclamation marks. Summary task shows up as the black bar. And I think we're pretty familiar with these, all from working with Microsoft Project. They're pretty standard across the, uh, the industry. If it's a sub-project, you have that icon on the screen, a milestone again by the diamond, completed task with the check mark within the task bar, late task. It'll also show if you have external milestones, the milestones not off the screen, it's a critical path, and also links to a hidden task, again, a task that could be off the screen as well. So we have another thing called pending edits. So any changes you make to the work breakdown structure of the Gantt itself are stored as pending edits. And it must be saved or discarded, as I mentioned earlier on. So just because you're doing a change doesn't mean it's actually going to affect the project yet until it's actually saved. And the edits on the project persist beyond the session for a specific user. These edits include edits on the roll-up fields, which are recalculated only after a save is performed. For example, if you extend the date for a subtask, the parent task dates are not extended until you save the change. And likewise, you know, if you have a parent project, if you change the end date of a, of a task that goes past the end date of the project, you know how the end date of the project will, of the parent will move, then that won't happen until you actually hit save. So impending edits include the following types of edits within the work breakdown structure. So if you create new tasks using, line, using the inline inserts, if you edit any task attributes that are on the uh, screen, you know, start date, finish date, percent complete, if you assign resources to tasks, or if you move tasks or task dates using the drag and drop features. Again, those be considered pending edits. So it's more on the pending edits. Actions that are, you know, these actions outside the work breakdown structure are unavailable while they're pending edits. So you need to save or discard your edits to enable these actions. So you can't create or delete tasks from the task properties. You can't indent or outdent tasks while they're pending edits. You can't move or copy tasks using the toolbar icons while you have pending edits. Can't move tasks up or down the work breakdown structure using drag and drop. You can't assign resources from task properties. 
You can't add existing subprojects. You can't baseline. You can't auto schedule. You can't open projects in external schedulers such as Open Workbench, which that makes sense, or Microsoft Projects because you have pending edits, so it's not sure what it's going to take. Uh, we all know the issue if you had two people work on the schedule at the same time, what would happen? Uh, this just sort of keeps that from happening. And create or remove task dependencies using drag or drop. So these are pending edits, and again, these would be unavailable, and these would be some of the icons on the screen that would be grayed out that you can't, uh, can't use until you actually save or discard your edits. But changes outside the Gantt view are saved directly to the database. Pending edits are saved temporarily until you accept or discard the changes. And if you do not save or discard your changes, the pending edits are discarded when your session expires. So if you're like my organization here, that Clarity automatically will log you out after 20 minutes. If uh, I've actually done this, I've been doing some changes, my Gantt chart, and I actually went to get a quick drink, came back, and Clarity logged me out. Uh, I had to re-edit my changes. So I learned, I learned pretty quick that it, uh, when I go get a drink, it's make sure I save my changes or uh, discard them beforehand. So the project, as I mentioned earlier on, is automatically lock, locked when you start making edits in the Gantt view. If the project is already locked, the lock icon appears in the toolbar. And if you hover over the lock icon, it will display the user who locked the project. And if, remember, only the current project is locked. Subprojects are not locked. So it's only the current project that you're manipulating. And projects are unlocked as soon as the user who locked the project saves their edits. So it automatically unlocks at that point. Or administrators with the administration application setup right can unlock the, pro the project. You can also see that the project is locked from the project properties page as well. So not only can you see from the interactive Gantt, if someone else, while you're working on the project, goes into the project from their session, they can actually see that the project is locked and it'll tell them by who, and depending if they have the right permissions, if they can unlock it or not. And you have the unlock button that will appear if you do have the access. So in this case, I'm just showing an example of the interactive Gantt. We can see the icon is actually locked. You see the little lock that's sitting there. We also they click to unlock the project. It's locked by the appropriate name of the person, which I had to black out, and the data was locked on. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, on the main project properties page, you can see it's locked by again. And you have the option to email them, which I've always loved that in Clarity. And you have the button here to unlock it if you have the uh, access, appropriate access rights. So as I mentioned earlier on, it does support dependencies. So it supports the four basic types of dependencies. You know, finish to start, start to start, start to finish, and finish to start. And it's very easy to, desi to designate a successor or predecessor for tasks. Now, when you set up dependencies in Clarity, if you do it strictly from you know, clicking on the task, and from the task properties, clicking the other uh, submenu for dependencies, a lot of mouse clicks, just by going to the end of the bar and clicking on the the chain icon and connecting it to the chain icon of either your successor or predecessor task saves a lot of time. You still will need to go in if you want to set up a lag for the task. But this makes life so much easier for setting up dependencies. And the task dependencies are also displayed in the Gantt chart. So you'll see the lines moving around. One thing you will find that's kind of interesting is you can actually have a start to finish a dependency, sorry, finish to start dependency as on the first one here, Gantt chart, uh, it's especially prevalent in milestones. Because of the way things render on the screen, sometimes it may actually look that the task or the milestone is starting prior to the end of the, uh, the predecessor task. That's not necessarily the case when you look at the start and end dates. It's just how it's rendered on the screen. I find it kind of interesting. Uh, hopefully, they'll fix that uh, one day, but it's just a, a minor nuisance. And again, this is one of those slides that uh, works better when the animations work. But for dependencies from the Gantt chart view, to change existing dependencies must follow these steps. So from the Gantt chart, you select, the, select your task. And from the properties drop down, you select dependencies. And you select the dependent name and then update the dependency information. So from here, you could actually change, again, the type, you know, finish to finish, finish to start, start to finish. And also, you can define the lag and the lag type at the same time. So where this is click intensive, if you just need to change the lag or do a quick and dirty change, you can do it from here. Or you can go from within the interactive Gantt, delete the dependency, 
and just do another drag and drop. If you're not doing anything with lags, you don't need to enter the screen whatsoever. And this one again, another slide that has animations. So you can also create basic dependencies in the GAN chart by dragging the chain icon. So as you can see in the first screen, I have a chain icon showing at the end of the task. And yeah, the chain icon at the end of the task. And I just drag and dropped it to the task next to it with the other chain icon. And then when I let go, it actually creates the dependency. But when you're doing it, if you just hold over the place, it will show you a little information about it with the uh, task level two, target deliverable, start to finish. So it's that easy to create. Just drag and drop, just like you do in Microsoft Project and other schedulers. This screen here, again, this one looks much better when the animations work. So task assignments, you can easily assign a role or a named resource to a task. Uh, as you can see here, it, it's a bit messy, but you can see we have assigned resources in the column in the top uh, screen. You can see the various phases. I have the test project V1 concept, and I have deliverable, and under deliverable, assigned resources, I have DBA, Smith, Kelly, and myself. I can click on that cell, and it'll bring up and show me a listing of the resources that are currently available. I can select the resource and press assign, and they'll then be assigned to it. So just select the appropriate resource or role and press assign. So you can add roles here. You can add the appropriate resources. Uh, again, I apologize that uh, the animations didn't show up in here. But again, from the interactive Gantt, just like Microsoft Project and other schedulers, you have the ability to add the resources directly through here. And these resources have to already be part of your team on the, within Clarity for that project. So if they're not part of the team, you can't add them through here. So you need to make sure they're added to the, through the team tab first and then you can assign them to the project. So task assignments, you can see that the DBA and Smith Janney are both assigned to deliverable two, and this was the end state of the prior screen. But again, you can't under assign resources, providing it is a task. It will not allow you to assign resources to summary tasks or to milestones, which is nice. And you can also assign roles and resources to tasks the following method. So you had the old way of doing it from within the uh, selecting the task, and here's the way you do it through the interactive Gantt. So you select the assigned resource field. You have the browse icon that you can press. It'll give you a listing of the resources that are currently available on the project. You just select it and click add, and they'd be added to your task. And in this case, we can see we've added the new, new person. The, upper, the little arrow appears in the upper left-hand corner, and that means they've been added, but it doesn't take effect until we actually hit save. So once we hit save, the triangle is removed, and that person's now been actually assigned to that task. So there is an interesting issue uh, within uh, this version of, uh, of the interactive Gantt. And I've discovered this by accident. And there is a, currently a ticket open. And also, I believe I have a uh, idea, in uh, which segues back to uh, Brian's presentation on ideas. So if you want to help solve this, go to the idea in the uh, Clarity Global Use Community site and click on it and vote on it. But when you have a summary task, and this is, everyone can duplicate this, so I'm trying to keep this as, as easy as possible. So when you have a summary task that contains a single task and a milestone, and you set the single task to 100% complete and the milestone to 0% complete, the summary task is set to 100% upon publish or when the update percent complete job is run. So I've actually worked this out with a bigger project schedule, and it still works that way, especially because I'm not using Microsoft Project or Open Workbench. So even though the milestones are not complete, the project can show that it's 100% complete. Whereas if you're using Microsoft Project and the summary task will be set to 99% until all the milestones are complete. So again, it's just something to be aware of uh, because it uh, was a bit daunting for one of our uh, customers here where I work where they're going like, why is this not showing up properly? Uh, like a project is showing up that's complete, but it's not because you know the milestone, these milestones haven't uh, been completed yet. And a couple of them dealt with getting, you know, paying invoices to a vendor, uh, from a vendor. So uh, it's something that's uh, rather interesting to see.
And finally, this is only a small portion of what the interactive Gantt can do. Uh, the presentation would be longer because the animations didn't quite work. But it's only a small portion of what the interactive Gantt can do. And you can always log into the Clarity Sandbox to experiment. And I'm going to log into the uh, Sandbox in a minute and share my screen and actually show you a couple of things that we can do with this. And is it a price for Microsoft Project? No, because Microsoft Project does what it does very well. Same with Open Workbench. They're, they're very good at what they do. They handle big projects very easily. But where we're finding this is working with our organization, it's working very well for small projects, for manipulating templates, managing templates. Uh, we have some very large projects that people are managing outside of Clarity and, and Microsoft Project, but they want to have a, small, a smaller version of the uh, schedule just with some key tasks and the phases located within Clarity. And they're finding this is ideal for doing that. They don't need to worry, worry, worry about Microsoft Project. They can go in and do the edits anywhere. So anywhere you can add, access Microsoft access Clarity, you can do these manipulations and do these changes. So it comes in quite handy. So I'm just going to see if I can share my screen. Share my desktop. Share desktop. So I'm sharing my desktop right now, so hopefully everyone can see it, and I'll change that back in a moment. And as you can see, you can now see my desktop, and I have a sample project here called TestBob. It's one I generally like to use. So as I mentioned earlier on, we had Open and Scheduler, and this is where the Gantt shows up. So we can click on Clarity Gantt, and I have a very simple project here. And it should be coming up. Let me try this again. Clarity Gantt. No live demo ever survives the uh, first attempt. Okay, I'll go into my tasks here. I'll try to schedule from here just to make sure. I have an error on my page. Okay, uh, so much for doing the live demo. <laughs> so let me go back to the presentation, considering I'm not going to be able to do a live demo. My apologies for that. And so do we have any questions? Uh, my apologies on the live demo. I need to find out why it's not working. As a reminder to ask an audio question, press star 1. At this time, we have no audio okay. question. Do we have any questions for uh, Brian or for David? Again, for questions, press star 1. At this time, there are no audio questions. Okay, we have uh, Lynn Harris and Patricia Crawford seem to have one listed here. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to give this back to Chris Hackett if there's no questions. And thank you very much. If anyone, I will. If anyone wants, I'd, I'll be putting this presentation up on the global community uh, as a shameless plug for CA World because I do really appreciate CA World, and uh, I find it is still the best training value for the dollar. If anyone's interested, I still have all the Clarity presentations going back to CA World 2008. So if there's one you're interested in, also please feel to let me know, and I can uh, send that off to you as well. And Chris, I'm going to give it back to you. Karen, do you have any parting uh, words for the folks? Gosh, no. Other than um, consider CA World, it's a great learning experience. And while it is fun, it is also um, an immersion into um, project and portfolio management and clarity and um, user experience. And I, I highly recommend it. I want to thank all of our speakers, Dave Warner, Brian Nathanson, and Michael Tebow, um, as well as the board. And I'll thank you guys as a community for your uh, support and um, hope to see you all in CA World.
Thank you, everybody, for attending. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect.